Will hardwood fig cuttings rehydrate after a whole year in the refrigerator? Let's find out. Alright, so I'm walking that tightrope again guys and I got a little behind the eight ball as usual and I stored a whole bunch of fig cuttings for an entire year. Now, Last winter, I was, I've got a lot of fig cuttings here. I was gifted some fig cuttings. I bought some fig cuttings. I took some fig cuttings out in my orchard. I had them all bagged up, all prepared, all ready to go. I made promises to people who gifted them to me. I was excited about the ones I bought and none of it ever happened. I feel like I've let some people down and I do have to say right from the beginning, I apologize to those of you who know you sent me some fig cuttings and I'm finally getting around to them a year later. I know, it's terrible, but that's where we're at. I do apologize sincerely. I'm trying to make it right. So if you've seen the last video where I did the hydrangea indoors, then you've seen all those fig cuttings sitting in that tent. And a lot of you were asking, Mike, I, you know, I've seen the hydrangea videos. I wanna know what you're doing with all those fig cuttings. Well, that's what I'm doing with them. Many of those fig cuttings, actually about 95% of them were given to me or bought from me last winter in January, February, and I still got them. Finally pulled them out of the fridge. The reason that you saw them all sitting in cups of water was because they've been sitting in that refrigerator for all this time. Now, as a lot of you know who do fig cuttings, over time, those hardwood cuttings, or I guess any hardwood cutting, they tend to lose moisture over time, even in the plastic bags. And so some of these cuttings have lost moisture. How do you know that? Well, you see the outside of that bark starting to shrivel. It gets a little bumpier as you feel around it, and it, it starts just kind of shriveling up. Well, then you know it's kind of getting too late, but I thought, you know, I've got to do something with these cuttings. I feel like I can revive some of them. So I soaked them all in water and I soaked them all for about a week's time because I wanted them to absorb as much moisture as they could possibly absorb and get back on the right track so that when I stuck the cuttings, they wouldn't wilt. They wouldn't have problems and start dying back right away. So I set all those in there for about a week and lo and behold, I was fairly surprised at what I saw and I thought it was pretty cool. It was what I wanted to see. I just didn't know what I was going to see. We'll go inside here and check these out in a second, but the big fat cuttings that were starting to wilt back and you could see that that real uh, unevenness, the wrinkling on the outside of the bark, they started rehydrating and they started swelling up again, even at the top that wasn't in the water. Those cuttings are absorbing moisture. Now, the smaller, skinnier cuttings, some of the varieties did the same thing. Some of them didn't fare as well. There were very few that didn't do that well, that didn't reabsorb moisture. And I knew they didn't because I could grab a little piece on the top, snap them, and they just snap like a twig, like a dried up twig. There were a few of them that I knew were rotten and dead because I put them in the water, soaked them for a week, and then when I pulled them out, the bark around the bottom that was in the water started turning to mush and just peeling off. It was rotten, it was dried up, it wasn't alive, and so those had to get tossed. Fortunately, it wasn't that many of them. But let's go take a look inside and see what these look like and show you exactly what I'm talking about. So it's been six days since I originally put these cuttings in these cups of water and it's been two days since I potted up these little guys here. What amazes me is just the resiliency of these figs. Some of these have been sitting in my refrigerator for over or just about a year. And look at this, like this figoin F5 that Steve sent me. This thing's been sitting in my fridge for a year. And after six days in water, you can tell there is just a lot of activity a lot of life in that cutting and i don't think we're going to have a problem at all these are some that have been sitting in my fridge for about the same amount of time and these are the narino and look at all of that activity and new green growth trying to start firing off right there i'm just 
I'm always amazed at how resilient these things are. Some of these cuttings were actually fairly dried out, like these Coldadam Mutante here. And once I rehydrated them, let me see if I can get a good shot of this. Here's one of them. There's the variety. These fat cuttings were looking really dry and they were wrinkled, but I soaked them in water for, I think this was in there for five days, and those wrinkles just flattened out and they absorbed a ton of moisture. And so I'm hopeful that we're going to get something happening. You can see that little bud right there trying to swell, but I just, these things are so resilient and you shouldn't ever give up on them and they can store for long periods of time. Now, time will tell. We're going to see how they do, but there's the beginning of it right there. All right, here we are back in the tent, and this thing is just about plum full. Isn't that a sight of beauty? Now, check this out, guys. So all of these have been up-potted, but these ones right here I'm still working on. It's just been every, you know couple days, I'll spend a couple hours just potting things up. I'm cleaning them. I'm prepping them. I'm using the rooting hormone, getting the pots filled. It just takes time, but that's what I've got left. And I still have a few more varieties outside I want to take and get stuck. But check this out. Now, some of these, six of these actually, all, all of these except for this one right here, all came from David Burke of Burke Family Farms, aka the Fig Hunter. I've done a video about him in the past, but he just recently sent me those cuttings, I don't know, maybe a month ago, somewhere around in there. All the rest of these, or at least 99% of the rest of these, were from last winter. Now, check this out. This was last winter, and we've got beautiful little green growth just starting to come on right here. I think this is, uh, yeah, uh, Nerino right there. That's a Nerino. That's a Nerino. That's a Nerino. We've got so many different varieties in here. I was most worried about some of these. Here's a, uh, uh, right, this one was looking exciting. I just, I've seen so many pictures. I don't know what kind of fig it's going to, you know, how it's going to taste, but Constantine de Algeri, I think is how you pronounce it. Really excited about that one. Sat in the fridge for a year, starting to get green growth. Really looking forward to seeing if that one starts taking off. We've got some Martinica Ramada, some Black Madeira KK. This one right here is a little worried about, White Madeira number one, and it was kind of shriveled up. Not too bad on this one, but it was a little shriveled up, and we've got a little bud that's just starting to come out. Let me see if I can set that down and show that a little better here. There it is. Look at that. Little bit of green on that. It's just starting to come out. So hopefully we're doing okay with that. I've got a couple of those. Here's one of them that was wrinkled up so badly. I thought there is no chance of this thing ever coming back. It's going to be dried up. It's dead. It cannot come back. And this one is uh, Cold Adam Utante. I've got some green that I just started noticing. First, you can look at the bark. See all those striations in that bark? all those striations along there. It was so wrinkly and the skin there was just rough, all that bark. But when I soaked it in water, it rehydrated and you can see now, it's kind of hard to see, but you can see all that bark is starting to swell and it pulled away from itself at those wrinkles. It's It looks wrinkled still, but it's not as wrinkled as it looks on the camera wonder if that'll show up. But anyway, you can see we've got some green growth starting right in there. And I've got a couple of these like this. Actually, here was, I had I had got two of those called the Dom Mutantes and both of them wrinkled up really bad, but because they're thick, healthy cuttings, they're looking okay. This one may not have bounced back. I don't know. I don't see green yet. Well, actually, now that I'm looking at it, there's a little tiny bud wanting to start creeping out on that guy. But that's a good example right there. You can see where it was all wrinkled up, but all those black lines in there, all those darker lines are where the bark was wrinkled. But then when I rehydrated it, the wrinkles pulled away from themselves because the bark swole up full of fluid. And there were actually a lot of these little root initials. You can kind of see them along there they were all down in that area that was in the water. So there's life, there's health in these cuttings. This one right here, like I said, this one came from 
David Burke, and it was it's only a month old or so, something like that, and it's doing real well. It's got lots of root initials on there. You can see some green growth. I'm going to get that stuck probably today. And then here was another one. These are some more Coldada Mutante, and they are a year old. You can see the wrinkling on it. They were just wrinkled up, and now that I've got them soaking in water, they're starting to, you can see that, that bark's starting to swell and pull apart where the wrinkles were. And then I know it's alive because I've got green growth right there. And I've also got some root initials starting on there. You can see them right there. A lot of root initials showing up right there. So, you know, it's not optimal. I should have stuck them last year, but we're doing okay right now. There was a red leaf one that, uh, I think that was the red leaf that uh, Steve over on the other side of the mountain sent me. Uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff in here. I mean, there's a, almost every one of these cups is a different individual variety, except for a couple of them. I've got some multiples, uh, but man, there's a lot of material, a lot of things going on in here. I, I need to expand this orchard because I don't know what I'm going to do with all these different varieties, all these different cuttings, but hopefully this answers some of your questions about how long these things can last. I did a video about these fig cuttings and how long they'd last, maybe a, probably two years ago, where I had some cuttings in the fridge for a year, and I had some in the fridge for two years. I did them at the same time. The two-year cuttings didn't make it. The one-year cuttings did make it, and they grew. And so I'm hoping I get the same results with this. These are all one year sitting in the fridge, except for those six down in there I was showing you. Uh, but yeah, we're doing good so far. Let's kind of comb throughout here. You can see all these, about a year old, you can see green growth, green growth, green growth, little green buds on all of these. Now, these have been sitting out. I pulled them out of the fridge maybe a week ago, or actually, it's probably been a week and a half, maybe even close to two weeks now, but you can see green growth. All of these are starting to, even the ones that don't have green growth are starting to swell and get some buds on them. Let's see, that one right there, don't see anything yet on that. Uh, yeah, so they, they're still viable though. They're not shriveling up. What's this one? This is a, that's another one of the Constantine de Algeri. Yeah, they're just, I mean, they're doing so good. So many of them. I am just, I'm hoping and praying for some miraculous things to happen in here. I'm going to give them all I got. We'll see what happens. Another thing you can see, I did something a little different this time that I normally don't do. I normally pull these, I normally don't have all this cover over the cups. Normally I would just fill bark in between all of them and then I would fill over top with even more bark over all the cups and that helped prevent moisture loss. But this time I didn't want to do that. I want to try this where I just put some uh, press and seal over them to keep the moisture and it's working great. You can see tons of moisture build up under there. Uh, and I hopefully if it works right, I'm not going to have to deal with all that excess bark. The excess bark, when I pile that up around the cups and over top, that comes in really handy when I try to root these outdoors in the cold. It actually acts as an insulating buffer so that when I use the bottom heat, it holds more heat in with all that excess bark. I don't need that here because I'm inside in my house and the temperature is relatively always right around 70, 72. Occasionally dips down to 68 if we don't have the wood stove going, but, but it's usually around 70 degrees. And so everything stays nice and warm in here. I don't have to worry about that so much. Uh, we'll see how it goes. I'm just going to play it by ear. I think this is going to work a lot better covering them. I won't have to worry about them drying out and then overwatering. I'm going to have to swap out this. This was really tough. This uh, saran wrap was really tough to deal with, cutting them into individual pieces. The press and seal worked a lot better. And for some of them, I just did these little lids. So I'm trying different things, seeing what works in here. Anyway, hopefully that answers some of you guys' questions. We'll go through and... Uh, show you how all this works out through the winter. Uh, we're committed now, man. I got a tent full of cuttings and I don't know what's gonna happen. Anyway, follow along. I'll do updates on these occasionally and we'll see how it all goes. Hope you guys have a fantastic week and I'll see you in the next video. Adios.